Thanks to Vicky's NCC timeline and photos along with Chris's overview about NCC, we can see how NCC has contributed to what we have today. However, there are still challenges to tackle, and contributions from NCC members are as important now as they've ever been. In my talk, I'd like to convince you that volunteering to work on NCC projects and initiatives will keep the Japanese studies field dynamic and relevant. And it will benefit you personally by stimulating your professional growth and expanding your contacts in the field. I'll share some of my own experiences and I'll target three critical objectives within the NCC's mission. To train Japanese studies librarians and information specialists, improve access, and to identify needs from the field, advocate, and seek solutions for our stakeholders. These three objectives are closely intertwined. Training I was among 19 junior librarians who benefited from the NCC Junior Japanese Studies Professional Training Seminar in August 2002 at Harvard. Most of us were first-timers at the NCC 2000 conference that Vicky and Chris talked about, and we had no idea of NCC's support system to help transition new professionals. We had no specific library science courses for Japanese studies, and we were often the only Japanese studies librarian at the institution. I had so many questions. What was hydrophobia? Meaning lending books and transmitting articles over the ocean. The coined word by Mary Jackson that I heard for the first time. How do I deal with vendors unfamiliar with the market outside of Japan? How do I go about collection development? How do I stay current about publications, trends, and survey the needs of users? How do I subscribe to e-resources from the un unwilling vendors? What is the e-resource licensing process? How do I apply for grants? I hadn't even thought about the need for grants. Well, we were all struggling along feeling a little helpless and isolated. To our rescue was an NCC-sponsored week-long program that NCC members, our senpai, developed for us. They were experienced librarians who understood what we are going through and stepped in to help the new generation. Those names in blue came all the way from Japan. I believe most of these 19 junior librarians regard this training as a defining moment in their professional careers, because all of the sudden, we didn't feel alone. The program covered a wide range of issues that you can see on the screen, and it wasn't easy to digest everything. But the participants' week-long suffering bonded us together and to our senpai. When I asked one of the instructors why they are willing to spend so much time and energy to help us, she simply said, and I quote, training you will lead to the continuation of our profession and contribute to the field as a whole. I was told by a person that I respect that my next contribution to the Japanese studies field will be to nurture the next generation of professionals. NCC made a program available online in 2004 
which continues to assist people. But if funding could be secured, this week-long training would really promote the kind of interpersonal bonding that you cannot get online. Improve access. This chart shows the trends in Japanese language database use from 1998 to 2000. The survey was conducted by the NCC Consortial Licensing Task Force. Some of, some of the newer librarians may take for granted the current e-resource environment in North America. But almost 20 years ago, it wasn't a friendly place if you wanted to use Japanese electronic databases. It almost seems unimaginable, but even though institutions were willing to pay subscription fees, the vendors refused access to some databases because they didn't want it to deal with unknown markets outside of Japan. Sometimes they didn't want to go through the fuss of creating English language licensing agreements. And at other times, they weren't re receptive to granting IP access, proxy access, or considering consortial accessing models. In their view, North America wasn't their database market. Unfortunately, we still encounter this situation among some vendors and information producers, and uh, more work is needed. Acknowledging these serious challenges, NCC created a standing committee in 2000 that we now know as the NCC Digital Resource Committee, DRC. DRC assumed the following roles at that time. To educate librarians and information specialists on database licensing, to advocate needs to improve e-resource environment and to negotiate with database vendors on their licensing practices if needed. DLC launched coordinated efforts. At conferences and when making individual site visits to Japan, DRC members and other librarians discussed information access needs and obstacles. This is a slide that Ellen Hammond, who was the chair of the DRC at that time, and I presented at the Japan Special Library Association annual conference. DRC gained support from the International House of Japan and the National University Libraries in Japan and joint campaign was initiated. In 2005, DLC developed basic guidelines and requirements for vendors of Japanese digital resources in North American library and uh, scholarly community. This long title was intended to educate Japanese vendors about the North American digital resource environment and to urge a collaboration between the vendors and customers. A pivotal moment was when NCC organized the ad hoc meeting on Japan-US digital resources. The meeting at the University of Tokyo in 2006 was co-sponsored by the Japan Association of National University Libraries, Seal Committee on Japanese Materials, and the Public and Private University Library Consortia. As you see, the members of the two Japanese associations involved big university libraries in Japan which are an important customer base for Japanese database vendors. The alliance we formed with those universities was key to our success. Without this consorted effort, we still might be unable to subscribe to Japanese newspaper and other databases. The consortial subscription model 
also would most likely not have been realized. Identify needs from the field, advocate, and seek solutions collectively. Well, NCC began getting requests for assistance from researchers on how they could obtain permission to use images from holders in Japan. It was very unclear whom to ask for permission and how to make the request. Even though image holders were identified, most requests were unanswered and unacknowledged. Researchers were desperate because university presses in North America require advanced official permission to use images in publications. No permission means no image use in books and articles. Because of this situation, the Image Use Protocol IUP Task Force was created in 2007. NCC's response was quick. A field survey was conducted to confirm the nature of the programs. It became apparent that both sides needed to learn how academic publications were produced and to develop a standard protocol. The stakeholders from North America, Europe, and Japan were identified and grants were obtained to hold an international conference. The conference was called Japanese Images, using them to support Japan studies internationally and was held in 2008 at the I House in Japan. At the conference, scholars, information specialists, and academic press reported the current situation in North America in the morning. During the afternoon session, the Japanese academic press Commercial publishers, museums, religious institutions, agents, and individuals shared their side of the stories. This international conference led to the first best practices for using visual images from Japan. And as practical templates that can be applied to different scenarios, as you can see. The conference proceeding was published in 2009. You might be wondering how we came up with an IUP logo seen in the middle. Here is our model, Lorenzo Besta. At the University of Hawaii, I provided a workshop on how to utilize the guidelines with the templates. Some of our researchers later told me with much excitement, those templates work, and I used those for Korean image holders, and it worked for that too. In conclusion, I only shared three examples today. I didn't have time to talk about collection development, including MVS grant, Japan Art Catalog Project, GIF user training initiatives, training the trainers, and more. But there are several common threads linked to all NCC's activities. The NCC's strengths come from being able to identify the needs of information specialists and information users and to strategize, advocate, mobilize stakeholders, and to collaboratively seek solutions. NCC also acts as a bridge between stakeholders in Japan, Europe, and North America. NCC continues to scan the information needs in the Japanese studies field. More key, key component is that NCC and its members have cultivated support in Japan with those who want to promote 
Japanese resources to the world. In 2007, I officially became an NCC Council member. Previously, I was just a beneficiary of NCC projects. The reality is that most of the heavy lifting must be done by volunteers because NCC only has a half time executive director and a few part time assistants. Up until then, I only saw the finished products all nicely gift wrapped and generously presented to make my professional work easier. It was only after I got directly involved in NCC work that I un understood the energy and dedication it took to create the products. It's been satisfying to have been able to volunteer to help solve bigger picture issues in the Japanese studies field. But my involvement with NCC helped to shape my own professional career. It created opportunities for me to work with people and organizations that I otherwise may have never encountered and to develop friendships that I cherish. So, if you're not already, I hope you too will get involved. I mean it when I say that you will win and so will Japanese studies. Thank you.